This is the range country, where the pounding hooves of untamed horses still thunder over mountains, meadows, and canyons. Every herd has its own leader, but there is only one fury. Fury, king of the wild stallions. And here in the wild west of today, hard-riding men still battle the open range for a living. Men like Jim Newton, owner of the Broken Wheel Ranch, and Pete, his top hand, who says he cut his teeth on a branding iron. Wild as Fury is, that's the one human voice he's learned to love and obey. The voice of the boy who once saved his life, Jim Newton's boy, Joey. a mutual trust and affection that everyone can understand. Especially a woman like Helen Watkins, Joey's school teacher and unfailing champion. Kneel down, let me get on you. And there they are together, a great wild horse and the only person on earth who can ride him, Joey and Fury. Smell something. Give him his head. mean anything to you, mister? Oh, I'm sorry. I was trying for a shortcut to those hills over there. Well, those hills have been there a long time. What's your hurry? Oh, they're a hot spot in the new uranium map issue today. I was hoping to beat the rush. By cutting your way across my ranch and letting my stock run loose, huh? Oh, I was going to mend the wire as soon as we went through. But those horses beat us to it. I'll take your word for that. Now, turn your rig around and get back on the road. It'll take me two days that way. I'll be too late to stake a claim. But it'll take me two days to round up those horses. Now, get going. That way. And if I don't? But if you don't, the sheriff will meet you on the other side of my property. And cutting a fence in this country will cost you 60 days. What's the matter, Joey? Nothing, Jim. I was just wondering. As long as the fence was cut, would it have hurt to let him go through? If I let them go through, then I'm inviting all the other prospectors to go through, too. They save time, but I lose horses. I didn't think of that. There's a question of property, too. Rules and regulations. I didn't make them, but I live by them. So do you. So should everybody else. Come on, let's get the fence fixed before we lose more horses. have you broken, young man? Only him. And he's not really broke yet. I'm the only one who can ride him. You must be quite a horseman. Well, Jim and Pete ride a lot better, but they can't ride Fury. He won't let them. Is that so? Is Mr. Newton around? No, sir. But he'll be back any minute. He and Pete are out getting the horses. The uranium hunters let loose. Oh, yes, of course. I heard there was a strike. Do you mind if I wait around till they get back? They're back now.
Gentlemen to see you, Jim. Mr. Newton? That's me. I'm Bob Ford from the Welfare Department. Oh, yes, of course. Judge Blake said you were coming over. Joey, take care of you all right? I uh, sure did. Good. You'll stay for lunch, won't you? Thank you, I will. Good, come on along. What's the matter, Joey? Aren't you hungry? No, sir. Fury's calling me. May I be excused? Mm-hmm. Poor kid. Ah, they all lose their appetites when I show up. But it'll come back all right as soon as he finds out that I didn't come here just to make trouble for him. Well, I'm glad to hear that myself. You had me a little bit worried. Well, contrary to popular belief, we welfare workers are not horned devils. This is just a routine checkup. We make them periodically on all custody cases to see how the boys are adjusting themselves to their new environments. Oh, well, if that's all there is to it, then you can write off this case as of now. Joey's doing fine. I hope he can stay here for good. Does that settle it? Well, not quite. You see, the decision of the department as to extending your guardianship for another year will depend pretty well on my report. And for that, I'll have to ask a lot of pretty nosy questions. Fire. Well, first of all, let's get one thing settled. Why can neither of you ride fury? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the funny thing is that we can't. I bet fury's thrown Pete and me 10 times apiece. Well, how do you account for that? Well, I'll tell you. I reckon fury's never heard of your welfare department. He just took it on himself to adopt Joey permanent-like. And I don't want to be around when anybody tries to bust them loose. <laughs> I wouldn't either. <laughs> Why do these welfare workers always have to come snooping around? Always checking up on people. Think I done something wrong. in the bunkhouse? Come on, Fury. Hey, what are you doing? You're stealing something. No, honest, I'm not. You are too. What'd you get? Not nothing, I tell you. I know you. You're the uranium hunter's kid. How come you're still around here? My dad went down to a pond to get some water for the radiator. The rattlesnake bit him. Gee, that's bad. Where is he now? We camped in a shack over in those hills. I know the place. Dad did what he could for himself. But when I woke up this morning, he was real bad. He's getting worse and worse. And I came over here looking for help. Come on, I'll take you to Jim. He'll know what to do. No, not him. He'll probably have me arrested. You wouldn't say that if you knew, Jim. Come on! No, please. My dad's dying. Can't you lend me a horse and I'll ride for a doctor? I got no right lending horses to strangers. Then you go get a doctor. Okay. But first, I'll take you to your dad. Let's hurry. Where are the horses? We'll ride double on my horse. Yours. like this when I left. Doesn't even know we're here. Gee, he needs help real bad. He's dying. I better hurry and get the doctor. Wait. Won't you need some money? I'll tell Doc Fulmer it's an emergency. Maybe he'll trust us. Well, here. Take this anyway. Twenty dollars? It's from what I took back there, from the pair of pants. Pete's money. And you told me you didn't take anything. Uh, you see why I had 
gotta take it. Well, I guess a fellow might do most anything to keep his father from dying. Anyway, I don't think Pete will mind. When he finds out what the money was for, I'll be right back. Call back at 3.30, Doc Boomer. Dear Doc Boomer, please come quick. Yours very truly, Joey Newton. Hello, Joey. Where's the fire? What's the best thing for a rattlesnake bite? Doctor, I reckon. Doc Farmer's out, but I left a note for him. Yeah? When did it happen? Last night. He's awful sick. It's pretty late for medicine, but if he ain't dead yet, this will keep him going until the doctor gets there. Now, look, you have him swallow two of these every hour. Thanks. Here's your money. And I'll telephone and locate Dr. Fulmer for it. Hey! Hey! You're forgetting your change. And that's the way it's been ever since. Joey's a great kid. Sounds wonderful. Now I have just one more official bit of business. I'd like to check his room. Oh, that'll be a pleasure. It couldn't be neater. Come on along. See? And it's always this way. I make Joey really toe the mark about keeping things in order. inspection? Well, I'd like it better if there was a shirt or a shoe that wasn't just so, like a boy's room should be. Well, you mean it's, uh, it's too neat? Well, it's a little like an institution. You know, a boy who feels completely at home must slip up once in a while, leave something out of order. I ought to know I've got two of my own. <laughs> well, maybe I have been pouring it on him a little bit. Jim! Oh, Jim! Something wrong, Pete? I've been robbed. I was just down at the bunkhouse. My layout's all messed up, clothes chucked around, and, and then money missing from this pants. How much? $20 bill. Well, maybe you misplaced it. Well, I don't keep my diggings as neat as Joey does, but I don't hang my pants on the floor like I found this. None of the hands back from the range? Ain't been a soul around all morning. Did you ask Joey if he'd seen anyone? He ain't here. He's rode off on Fury. Joey was here all alone when I arrived. Are you suggesting that Joey took that money? He wouldn't do that. I certainly hope you're right. I know I am. I'd bet this ranch on it. Where's the doctor? He was out, but he'll be here. I got some medicine at the drugstore. This'll help him. Get some water.
kind of late. Past time for Joey to feed the stock. Tain't like him to miss that. Didn't Joey ever give you and Jim anything to worry about before? Sure, but nothing like this. Them times, he always seemed to get himself in a fix trying to get people out of trouble. Maybe it's the same way this time. Well, I've called all Joey's friends. None of them have seen him. Well, don't you think we'd better get saddled up and start hunting for him? No, no hurry. I have a hunch he'll be showing up here any minute. If he does, are you going to ask him about the money? No, not a word. And I don't want anyone else to, either. If, if Joey knows anything about that money, he'll tell me himself without being asked. That's the way it's always been between us, and I'm not going to change it now. Some good. He can sit up. Dad! Come get him back to bed, Joey. Give him some more medicine. Yeah, but he sure weighs a lot. He isn't breathing very much. I'd better get Jim. The doctor may be too late. Please, Joey, don't leave me. Gee, Larry, Fury could get him. Fury? But he's only a horse. Sometimes that horse acts like he went to school. You watch. Fury, I want you to do something real important. Go back to the ranch and bring Jim here. You understand? Bring Jim here. <laughs> This is Jim Newton. I've been waiting here all afternoon for Joey to come back for his change. His change? Yeah, a $20 bill. Say, anybody out your place get bit by a rattlesnake? Well, no, not here. Why? I see. He didn't say where he was going. Uh-huh. All right, well, thanks, Mr. Jessup. Uh, Pete will pick up the money. Goodbye. Well, Joey had the money, all right. But it was for somebody else. He tried to get Doc Fulmer, and then he bought some snake bite remedy at the drugstore. Are you telling me Joey really had my $20 bill? Well, it looks like it. But I'd still bet that he didn't take it. I'll take half your bet any time. Well, let's saddle up and go looking for him. Yeah. I'd like to go along if you don't mind. Glad to have you. I hope you've got a kind-hearted and tolerant horse. I'll get my boots and Levi's. What about that welfare fella? He's a smoothie. Can he get Joey took away from here? Nobody's going to take Joey away from me. Not without an act of Congress. Mm. Hi, Doc. Gee, am I glad you're here. Hello, Joey. I had a hard time finding you. Uh, I hope I'm not too late. Doctor, he doesn't move. He just lies there. Well, son, we'll have a look and see if we can't make him jump around a bit, huh? Uh-huh. Let's see.
anywhere to look. Well, Rattlesnake's the only clue. Most of them are up on the south ridge. Look, there's a riderless horse. Hey, it's Fury. Seen. He's trying to tell us something. Go ahead, Fury. We'll follow you. He isn't moving very much. He will. Your father's heart is as strong as a diesel engine. You know, Jory, your handwriting's pretty good. It isn't every fellow that can save a man's life by writing notes. And you spell all the words right, too. I have the money to pay you with. I mean, I did have. I forgot to get my change at the drugstore. Mr. Jessup will pay you. Must be at least $18. $18? Why, I don't get so much from ordinary people just for an appendectomy. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll pick up $3, and I won't tell Jim Newton what a spender you are. <laughs> You did it. Well, I'll say you did. What's going on, Joey? The uranium hunter. He's sick. He's inside. The doctor's with him. All right, Jim. Hello, Doc. What's happening? Well, Joey here did a sort of Paul Revere's ride to get me so as I could treat Mr. Marsh for a rattlesnake bite. He even wanted to pay me $18. You want to tell me about the money, Joey? Do I have to? Even if I pay it back out of my allowance? Paying it back doesn't alter the fact that the money was stolen. Even if it was only borrowed? Are you admitting that you actually took the money? Answer me. Please, Mr. Newton. I can't let Joy take the blame. He didn't steal the money. I did. He didn't even know I had it until we got here. And that's when you borrowed it to, to get help from Mr. Marsh? Yes, sir. And then he only took it to get a doctor. Now, gentlemen, let me tell you something. Whether the money was borrowed or stolen, if Joey hadn't got those tablets, my patient never would have pulled through. Your point's well taken, Doc. Joey, thanks for backing me up all the way along the line. Well, let's get back to the ranch. I don't think Pete's going to want to bring any charges. Charges? I'm leaving that change of mind at the drugstore to be drunk up in soda water. <laughs> well, thanks, Jim, for your hospitality and your cooperation. I'll be running now. Well, uh, not without at least a hint of what's on that report, I hope. Don't worry about that. You came through 100%. I came through? You don't think I ever had any doubts about Joey, do you? No, my only worry was you. Whether you had the necessary understanding and faith to make you a fit guardian. Well, I'll be doggone. <laughs> and you're a mighty lucky young fellow to have such a guardian. So are you, Fury. Goodbye, Joey. Bye. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.